الحمد لله سابغ النعم وخالق الإنسان من بعد العدم فالحمد ثم الحمد ثم الحمد لك حمدا كثيرا طيبا يا رب لك أعطيتنا خيرا كثيرا ربنا سترت عن كل الورى عيوبنا ثم الصلاة بعد والتسليم على النبي المصطفى الكريم we are standing in the ancient land of Bukhara, the ancient city of Bukhara, uh, one of the most exotic cities we've all heard about. Allah Azza wa has blessed us all to come to this land. Alhamdulillah, I'm coming uh, with our group from Sacred Journey. And I wanted to show you a little bit about the city. First and foremost, Bukhara, of course, it is one of the ancient cities that became famous for being on the Silk Road, the famous Silk Road that went from uh, China all the way to the Byzantine Empire. It was one of the most important super highways of information of, um, uh, of passing material goods of course of silk but not just of silk of spices of trade and of course because it was a silk road it was an actual road by the way there wasn't just one road there were multiple roads here but the point is that there was this road that people would take from one side of the world to the other and that facilitated the passing not just of material goods but of knowledge and of interactions of civilizations Marco Polo went on the Silk Road Ibn Battuta took the Silk Road as he traveled from east to west so Bukhara was one of the main supermarkets if you like on the Silk Road one of the main bazaars where people from across the world would come and they would uh, sell their goods over here of course as they're going through this beautiful land of Bukhara and Bukhara of course was conquered as you know in the early Islam uh, during the time of of the early Umayyad uh, time frame. Of course, the Sahaba themselves, they uh, conquered parts of this land, uh, the late uh, Sahaba time frame, and it was made a part of the Muslim rule uh, around 700 or so uh, CE. And the Muslims began giving da'wah to the people. The local people here were of various uh, uh, backgrounds. They were Buddhists, and they were also what are called shamanists as well. And we are now actually standing uh, at one of the oldest, in fact, the oldest standing structure in Bukhara. Uh, we, it was built over a thousand two hundred years ago but that's the physical structure before the building this was the original moon temple where they would worship a moon god the ancient shamanists they had their moon god here they had a temple over here when the people converted to Islam they then converted this into a masjid and uh, uh, when the Soviets came they destroyed the the masjid part of it but they kept it as a museum so it is now a museum so this is the oldest structure that is still standing in the city of Bukhara it is the site of the first masjid ever built. In other words, we can safely say that Imam al-Bukhari and some of the greatest scholars, they prayed in this masjid. Not, of course, the, the architecture, not the bricks here, but the location, this facility. And in fact, we will see this masjid is located below the, the city level because obviously city levels rise. So if you can see over there, we are actually underneath the city line. The city line is above us. So what we're going to do now, inshallah ta'ala, is we're going to take a quick uh, tour. We're going to zoom through the city, go through the ancient markets with the exact places where, you know, silk and spices and all of the goods would be sold. Still, the market is active. Still, you can buy Bukhara rugs. Still, you can buy, you know, saffron and the spices that come. And we're going to zoom through the marketplace until we get to the city square. And we'll tell you some very interesting things about that. So come with me, inshallah.
so we are standing in front of the uh, Kailan uh, Minaret and the Kailan Mosque. Uh, mashallah, we have some of the locals here as well. Mashallah, it's interesting, uh, beautiful. So let's walk this way. So then I want to show you a little bit about what we're going to be uh, talking about. So this is the Kailan Minaret. Uh, the minaret here, the minara over here, when the Muslims first conquered it, uh, one of the earliest dynasties here, they built a minaret around 900 CE. So that's like 1,200 years ago. However, that was made out of wood. And obviously, over the course of the next few centuries, it was you know, destroyed, it was burnt down. And so finally, around 11 or 1,200 uh, CE, basically 1,200 years ago, this minaret was constructed. So this is the original minaret that has been standing in Bukhara. It is the landmark of Bukhara for over 1,200 years. And uh, I find it very, very beautiful that look at what's written over here. Uh, if you can look, go up to the calligraphy, uh, so the top is Subhanallah, Bihamdi Subhanallah al Azim throughout the whole thing, and then the ayah says, "Wa in yudika bi khair, yamsaska Allah bi dzurran, fala kashi, fala illa hu, wa in yudika bi khair, fala rad dari fadli." That if Allah Azza wa Jal uh, wishes for you or uh, some type of uh, harm, then no one can lift that harm except Him. And if Allah wishes for you any good, then no one can reject that good. No one can prevent that good from coming to you other than Him. So this minaret is the original minaret for 1,200 years. It is the hallmark of Bukhara. Before this, there was another minaret. So basically, Bukhara has always had one of the most impressive minarets uh, of, of Central Asia. And what is really interesting, and this, this, this fact blew my mind away, uh, many of you know Genghis Khan and the Mongol invasion. What most of us don't know is that Genghis Khan himself personally entered this land of Samarkand of Bukhara. He entered this very site of Bukhara and he walked to this very monument. This monument or this pillar predates Genghis Khan. Legend has it that as he looked up, his turban fell off and it fell to the floor and he didn't even pick it up in awe. He was just looking and looking and looking. And then when he picked it up, he actually bowed down uh, to show venerance because obviously he was a pagan. He was a, you know, a, a non-Muslim. And so he bowed down to show venerance to this massive icon, the likes of which somebody like Genghis Khan had never seen in his whole life. And then Genghis Khan marched into the largest masjid of Bukhara, uh, which is this complex. However, the complex, of course, was built after him. Now, again, to, to reiterate, this minaret is the actual minaret that Genghis Khan saw. This minaret predates this mosque complex. The mosque that we're going to enter in was one of the earliest masjids ever built in Bukhara. Not the earliest, I showed you the earliest. This is one of the earliest. It was built in the time of the early Umayyads, it's one of the first masjids. The physical structure that is standing here dates back to around 1500. So the physical structure is 600 years old. So the location is the same, but what we're gonna see is around 600 years old. Genghis Khan saw this minaret and was very impressed. He then walked into the older masjid in the same location with his shoes on intentionally. He knew you were supposed to take your shoes off. He walked in, he trampled on, he sat on the mihrab in this very complex. Of course, not the same one, but the, the location is the same. And he then berated the Muslims. And it's a long story. Uh, the Muslim ruler of this region had uh, killed the envoys of Genghis Khan and had taken their wealth for himself. And that's the beginning of Genghis Khan's conquest. That's the beginning of Genghis Khan leaving Mongolia and conquering half the world. It was because the Muslims of this land, the ruler, did something that was wrong. He trampled on the rights of Genghis Khan. The envoys, the ambassadors that came, he massacred them and he took the wealth of Genghis Khan that was went as a trade. It was supposed to be a trading and the ruler became greedy and said, who are these Mongolians, whatever, I'll just take their wealth. Genghis Khan became so enraged. That was when, this was the first land he attacked and he entered into the city of Bukhara. He massacred hundreds of thousands of people. He entered the masjid and this is according to legend, this is what he said. He sat on the mimba and he said, that this is literally what is written in the books of history. I am your God's punishment to you because you failed to live up to your religion. This is what Genghis Khan himself said. You didn't act faithfully according to your tradition. And so your God sent me as a punishment against you. And he showed no mercy to the inhabitants, even though he was impressed by the architecture. So he allowed this to stand, but he massacred hundreds of thousands of people and he destroyed the masjid complex, which was then of course rebuilt after him and rebuilt after him until finally 600 years ago, one of the dynasties came and they built uh, in the same location, this massive complex. And I'm gonna show you, it's really a beautiful, beautiful, masjid uh, uh, opposite the masjid this is the Mir Arab Madrasa 
This is the madrasa that has been teaching ulama for over 700 years. And in fact, this was the only madrasa that the Soviets, when they conquered uh, the, this land and they invaded it in 1920, the Bolshevik Revolution, if you know, and they overtook it, they imposed their communism. They shut down all the mosques, they shut down all the madrasas except this madrasa. So this is the only madrasa that still had a little bit of Islam and Quran being taught even during the repressive Soviet uh, regime. And it is the Mir Arab Masjid. Yesterday, uh, I, we visited and I entered the, masjid, the, the, the complex, Alhamdulillah, I met with some of the students and I met with um, some of the teachers. The teacher I met with, in fact, he had graduated from Al-Azhar University uh, and only the local Uzbeks who are studying here and teaching here. So some of their teachers have studied from abroad. Uh, I was told that uh, there are a number of people as well who have graduated from, uh, from my alma mater University in Medina. They're also in the city. I'm trying to meet them, let's see if I can meet them today. But I want to show you the, the actual um, masjid. Uh, oh, before we get there, sorry. Okay, let me show you one thing. Go all the way to the top there. Again, I love which ayat are chosen, right? So it says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Shahid Allahu annahu la ilaha illa huwa wal malaikatu wa ulu al-ilmi qa'iman bil qist. La, uh, that uh, Allah has testified and the angels testify and the people of knowledge testify that la ilaha illallah so they mention the people of knowledge so this is the ayah in the Quran Surah Ali Imran that Allah praises the people of knowledge Ibn al-Qayyim says this ayah is the best blessing the biggest blessing that the Quran has given to the people of knowledge because he put the people of knowledge in the same sentence as Allah and the angels and the people of knowledge so they put this ayah when they enter the, the madrasa to show you the status of the people of knowledge so now this is the madrasa now we're going to enter the uh, masjid and of course the primary verse is a very common verse when you enter the mas masajid that uh, and the masajid ahada. masjids belong to Allah so nobody should be made dua to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this masjid was built in 1514 1514 it is called the masjid of Kalan or Kailan it is called and it is under the protection of course of UNESCO World Heritage Site and just take a look at how beautiful this masjid is it is one of the largest masjids in all of Central Asia uh, and it, uh, on the, it was supposed to accommodate everybody for Eid and Jumu'ah. The whole city would be able to come here for Eid and for Jumu'ah. Over 12,000 people could come and pray uh, in one time in this masjid. Now I want to show you one very interesting fact uh, about this, uh, this complex. Of course, as in all old masajid, you see the wudu area, right? In every single masjid of ancient times, the wudu area was right dab in the center, in the middle of the, the complex like this. And you would have, if you, you needed to do wudu, you could just go there and do your wudu over there. Um, this masjid uh, is one of the largest, as we said, in all of Central Asia. It is, of course, the largest in Bukhara itself. And this masjid has been functioning on this site since the 700s. It was built, of course, after uh, the Atori Magan, Atori Masjid that I showed you before. It's the second or third masjid built, but it is still essentially uh, a masjid that definitely people like Imam al-Bukhari and others, they would have prayed in. Again, in this locality, obviously the physical building, this is only 600 years old, but of course this location has been there for the longest time since the beginning of Islam. Now, um, I want to show you just one thing. Let's see if we can come over here where it's the best place to take this video. Uh, I'm here with my erstwhile assistant who wishes to remain anonymous, but we will call him Abu Zubair for the time being, inshallah ta'ala. When he wishes to reveal himself, his kashf will be done, inshallah ta'ala. So, uh, I guess let's get in the, the shade so that I can speak more clearly, inshallah. Where should we? Actually, let's sit in the shade because I wanted to show you. Now, what is the problem of this large area? Think about it. Once upon a time, you would have 12,000 people. Imagine Salat al Taraweeh, imagine Jumu'ah Khutbah, imagine you know, any uh, large gathering. You have 12,000 people praying here. What's the problem? Obviously, the problem is that you cannot hear the Imam, right? You cannot hear the Imam. These ulama and scientists of the time, subhanAllah, the mind boggles how they figured out, how they knew this, what they did. I have no understanding or clue of how they, un how they were able to design an acoustical uh, site such as this one. Now, I, I don't think you can hear, but as I'm speaking, uh, maybe you can hear the amplification coming back. What we discovered with our guide yesterday, and we tested this out, 
is that the mihrab over there, the mihrab where the imam would be reciting is engineered such that the voice is going to be projected upwards into uh, the dome and the dome will then amplify it, send it back down and then is going to go left and right across these chambers and in each of these chambers it's going to go through the dome up and down again echoing all the way through this chamber and then all the way down to the end and then all the way down to the corridors such that whatever the Imam says over here in a reasonably loud voice the domes and then check this out underneath the domes, right underneath them, were placed large vats, large empty chambers that were also supposed to echo back up into this area. So we have over here these acoustical domes and whenever, whatever the Imam would be saying from the mihrab, you would then get it amplified throughout the entire area such that it would reach the courtyard itself. Such that it would reach the courtyard itself. Now yesterday, yesterday <coughs> I tested it out. Uh, our guide said to us that when the Soviets came, obviously they, they shut the mosque down and they used it for storage facility. Can you believe they used this for fertilizer, astaghfirullah. For 80, 90 years, there was no salah being prayed over here. Uh, in the Soviet era, there was repression. Of course, Muslims were not allowed uh, to, to practice their faith. When the Soviets came, they, came, they converted this area into um, uh, 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 just a... Uh, chamber where they would keep their fertilizer and what they did was they took up these big vats and they used them and they destroyed them on the right hand side for some reason they left the vats of the left hand side so yesterday uh, I went to the mihrab and I recited Quran and we had people standing at the very end the far corner of the left hand side and they said that they could hear very lightly not in a loud voice because obviously the, the acoustics has been damaged, it's not the original structure. But still they could hear me recite, even though I was reciting like I'm talking to you, in a regular voice, I wasn't screaming, I was speaking in a regular voice, and on the other side of the complex they could hear. So, in those time frames, during Jumu'ah, everybody would be absolutely quiet, and the Shaykh or the Khatib, his voice would be heard and amplified to 12,000 people simply because of the acoustics of how they created this. Now I want you to see the dome and the mihrab. And let's see if you can hear a little bit of the echo. I don't know if the uh, iPhone is going to catch this echo, but let's see if you can hear a little bit of the echo. So this echo, is supposed to reverberate throughout the entire masjid. So whoever is standing over here and saying Bismillah al-Rahman al-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman al-Rahim Maliki Yawm al-Din I don't know if you can hear, but even I from this can hear the reverberation coming back. Uh, from uh, the uh, the facilities here. So again, mashallah, just look here. Oh, this is a beautiful shot over here. Just look over here, mashallah, the beauty of the masjid, 600 years old, how much knowledge they had, the acoustical engineering and technology, the turquoise beauty. This is absolutely stupendous and overwhelming. We will be leaving the city of Bukhara today, but we're heading out to another exotic destination that is Samarkand tomorrow. Inshallah ta'ala, I'll upload another video about Samarkand. I pray that this is a benefit to Inshallah ta'ala. And until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. الأكوان 
وفيه تعطر الآذان والقرآن ضياء يملأ الآفاق ونور يبعث الأشواق وفيه محاسن الأخلاق والقرآن كم يهتدي الحيران فيه والنفس كم حنت إليه يعلو ولا يعلى عليه هيا نرتل آيه ونعيش تحت ظلاله ننسى الهموم بقربه لن تستقيم حياة إلا به هو القرآن والفقان إليه تنصت الأكوان وفيه تعطر الآذان والقرآن ضياء يملأ الآفاق ونور يبعث الأشواق وفيه محاسن الأخلاق والقرآن أسعد به قلوبنا واغفر به ذنوبنا واشرح به صدورنا يا ربنا أذهب به أحزاننا فرج به همومنا واجعله شاهدا لنا يا ربنا والقرآن والفرقان إليه تنصت الأكوان وفيه تعطر الآذان والقرآن ضياء يملأ الآفاق ونور يبعث الأشواق وفيه محاسن الأخلاق ذكر وموعظة ونور فيه شفاء للصدور وشفيعنا يوم النشور صلى عليك الله يا خير الورى تعدد حبات الرمال وأكثرا صلى عليك الله ما غيث هما فوق السهول وبالجبال وبالقرى فوق السهول وبالجبال وبالقرى